Welcome to the next project. This is episode four of my Harley Benton T-Style Acoustasonic inspired kit modification project series. Uh, this is another fast paced video as I want to cram as much information into a short amount of time as possible. I don't want to bore you guys. I want to keep you interested and uh, help you see what's going on. Uh, as we saw in the last episode, I did a bunch of work on the neck and headstock, got the veneers put in. I still have to do a little refinement on that area, but I now have frets in the fingerboard. It's polished up and looking good, shiny, ooh, you can see the shine right there. I also have the body glued together, I have the spruce top glued into the whatever wood this is, a double ply binding between the two, and a single ply binding cut in. Uh, between the sound hole and the new top. Also have a new contour to where the neck meets the body. A new plate made, which I have yet to finish, uh, but it's getting pretty close. Uh, again, I've uh, countersunk it into the body, so it's fairly flush. There's just so much going on. Why don't I stop talking and we'll just get to it and start the next project. With the fingerboard glued in place, I needed to reintroduce that fender style headstock scoop back into the fingerboard. I used my homemade drum sander, but it wasn't quite doing the trick. So I had to move on and use my little handheld oscillating spindle sander, which I have mounted into my router table. This finished things off pretty well. What would a video be without uh, some hand sanding? Well, it'd be pretty exciting probably. So I'm not gonna show you too much of it. Here I was just lining up the fingerboard with the edges of the neck and getting ready uh, to apply a finish to the fingerboard. I used a radius beam to clean up the uh, radius that I cut with the router. I think it went from 400 to 600. Um, grit papers just to clean it up make sure everything was level the way I wanted it and I eased the edges of the fingerboard to give it that uh, wonderfully used feel nice and easy on the fingers cleaned everything up with some acetone to get it rid of any oils that might be in the natural wood and then started applying my finish which is CA or super glue and this stuff is stinky it will burn your eyes your nose your brain so be careful a little bit of cleanup sanding, which I typically just do by hand, but I use some 400 grit paper on a beam just to knock down high spots, lint, gnats, bugs, whatever might get in it. And there's a blunder. This happens when you don't have quite enough CA on your applicator and it like instantly bonds. Not a big deal. You scrape it clean and keep on going. For some reason, I almost always forget to add side dots when I'm making a neck, um, and this was no rare occasion. As I was putting the CA on, I realized, oh man, I didn't do side dots again. So I pulled over, got out of the bus, um, kicked the tires, added some side dots, then got back behind the wheel. This really didn't delay the trip any, as the CA dries so fast, that uh, you know I didn't have to wait for it to cure to put side dots in. Once uh, the side dots went in and got cleaned up a little bit, uh, I went right back to work adding the CA finish. a total of 25 coats of CA added to this fingerboard and I did a quick uh, 400 grit hand sanding um, at about every fourth or fifth coat and then the job was done. I chose not to reuse the uh, supplied factory neck plate with this kit. So I tried some others that I have in a scrap bin and the idea of the rounded front edge was pretty appealing. However, I didn't like the size of it since I will be doing a recess to drop the neck plate into the body. 
So I modified that curvy shaped neck plate uh, and made my own. Here I'm marking for my drill points using a little spring loaded center punch. And here I'm making a template. What the hell? Man, another template. Uh, this will be to route the recess into the body in the back so the new neck plate will sit down flush with the surface of the body. A little router table action and a test fit. Uh, just a little loose so have room for some finish. I hope everybody's hanging on for this because I'm bouncing all over the place. Back to the fingerboard. Uh, doing a bunch of hand sanding. Um, what was it? Uh, 600, 800, I think there was 1200 in here. And there's 1500, 2000 grit, and I finished it off with some rubbing compound uh, just to bring it up to a big shine. It ends up looking really good. I don't always uh, polish these. Uh, actually, the first couple necks I did, I left them at 600 grit, and they had a nice matte finish, and I thought it looked really good. But ever since then, I've been getting goofy and starting to polish fingerboards, and uh, I don't know why. Well, it does look nice. Time to do a little bit of fret work and I clean up all my fret wire with, uh, I think I used some naphtha on this one and it just gets any manufacturing gum off of them that there may be and there always seems to be some film on the frets when I get them, uh, the fret wire when I get them. And uh, at this point my fret job is just cutting the frets to length, nipping the tangs back a bit and getting them pressed in. I did not do a leveling or a crowning or anything of that nature. I did cut them to width, um, beveled them a bit, and added uh, a round over to the ends of the frets. But I will do the actual leveling and uh, dressing and everything a little bit later in the process. I just wanted to keep things moving at this point. give this uh, unique antique body style a bit of a modern flair by giving it a newer style neck plate. And while I'm at it, I'm using that template I made a couple minutes ago to recess the neck plate into the body. So it'll pretty much be flush. Um, as you run your hand across the back, you'll still feel um, the screws, you know, they're a, a kind of a rounded head. So they'll protrude up out of the neck plate just a little bit but uh, it'll be a better feel, I think. I, hopefully it will help accessibility um, for those people who can play the higher frets, which really is not me. I used a semi-sharp chisel to do my rounding and it can always be sharper, that's for sure. Now I'm using the neck plate to locate and punch the holes through the body and using the body to locate the holes in the neck. And here I'm countersinking the holes that are in the neck plate so the new neck screws will fit in there nicely. The uh, sound hole installation secret goes something like this. Add glue to the sound hole, press it into the hole, put it on some wax paper, add weight, let it dry, move on to something else. Like adding some wipe on urethane to the inside of the body. And the only reason I did this is to hopefully control any moisture um, transmission 
The body is so thin, this wood is so soft. Um, if you sneezed on it, it would probably swell. So I wanted to make sure the body had some sealing on the inside. And then while that's drying, I jumped into another test. Typically I laminate my multiply binding together using a little um, lamination jig thing that I got from Stumac. This time I decided to do it by hand and tape it to the template I used to cut the top. In hindsight, I should have added some of my vinyl tape to the edge uh, just to be sure that I didn't accidentally bond my binding to the template. Finally, at this point, gluing the top one went really well. Just a little bit of tight bond glue all the way around. I signed my name and some cute little notes to the inside of the body in case this thing ends up in the junkyard someday and somebody opens it up. I used my template again and the binding that I glued together. The binding is basically used as a spacer to make sure the top goes exactly where it needs to be, leaving the right size channel all the way around for the binding to go back in. The template I put on top, which is a perfect spacer, you know, fits the the top perfectly and then I was able to weight it to smash it down until it dried. Now I'm going back and cutting a binding channel uh, for the sound hole. I ended up adding um, a thin, uh, I think it was up 20 thousandths um, black binding around the sound hole just to clean it up. There were a little wood fuzzy around there so I didn't like the way that looked. I am cutting the binding to, to length. And I cut it at an angle so it'll be almost invisible when it's in there. Oh yeah, it, actually it will be invisible. It is invisible. You can't see it. I used acetone to melt the um, binding to the body on this project. Typically I use super glue. Um, it's my preferred method. But since the ends of the uh, spruce top and the open grain on the body are so porous, I didn't want to get super glue uh, wicking into the end grain. So I went with acetone, which won't stain typically. And uh, it will melt the binding, as you've probably seen hundreds of other videos of people using uh, acetone to apply binding. I let it uh, sit overnight and came back and used my semi-sharp chisel to do the whittling away of the excess binding that's sticking out all over. And um, I think I really do need to take uh, a couple hours and sharpen all of my chisels. Hmm. Maybe I'll go do that now. Well, enjoy the rest of the video. I'm gonna go sharpen some chisels. It didn't take long for me to talk myself out of uh, sharpening chisels. I really just wanted to watch the video. Everything has gone very well uh, with the project up to this point, so that's good. And I would like to thank everybody for coming along, uh, returning to watch the videos, join me through this project as it unfolds. Again, thanks for joining me here. So please subscribe if you haven't already ring the bell for future notifications of videos, leave some comments, and uh, you know, thanks to everybody who did let me know where they're at around the world. It's pretty cool seeing uh, the reach of these videos and the fact that there are so many people interested in what's going on, so that's all right. The next video will be out in a few weeks, and until then, be safe and take care. Mm -hmm.